Heidi Fang for MMA Fight Corner with UFC middleweight Chris Weidman, who's ready to take on the toughest test of his career at UFC 162, July 6, here at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. You are taking on Anderson Silva for the UFC middleweight championship. How does that feel to come to this point in your career? Uh, it feels great. It's a dream come true. Uh, you know, I've been envisioning this fight since I started MMA about four years ago, and finally I have this opportunity to, to fight the greatest of all time, and and I, I can't wait to get in that octagon, and uh, I won't let this opportunity slip through my fingers. 2012 was quite a roller coaster year for you. You started it off with the Damian Maya fight. You took that on 11 days' notice. You demolished him. Then you get to Mark Munoz. You dismantle him. And then you were scheduled for the Tim Boach fight. You found out about the injury. You had to go through surgery. And of course, your home was just demolished by Hurricane Sandy. What has all of that been like for you through the last year and coming up to this moment? You know, it's, I don't really, I don't reflect much on things. I'm just very focused on what I got to do. So I haven't like, you know, really reflected on it. But I haven't, with the Hurricane Sandy thing and the injury, I haven't, you know, once felt bad for myself because you always have other people that you feel bad for. Like my next door neighbor, he's 80 years old. He has a one floor, his house is completely ruined, no flood insurance. So I'm the, you always kind of like end up being focused on someone else, who I think is like almost a human response to dealing with, you know, I guess, you know, drama. But uh, is that right if I put my arm That's here? all right. All right, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, no, I, I, you know, it's all good. And it's just, I think anytime you go through a tough time and you persevere, it makes you a stronger person. I think I became a better fighter. I've had some time to be in the gym and focus on some different areas. And I'm just real excited to display my, uh, my skill set on July 6th. The last time I spoke with you was at the uh, MMA Awards. You got the Breakthrough Fighter of the Year. Yeah. And um, you were living at the time in the top floor of the home, and there were no doors, you said, on the oh, bottom floor. Yeah. How has the progress come along with your home? Well, we're still on the second floor, and the and, and there's doors on the first floor now, So and, and we have electric and heat and water. Uh, we still have issues as, you know, there's, because of the construction being going down uh, on, the, on the first floor, there's some issues on the second floor. But overall, not bad. Back to normal life pretty much and we're good to go cool now of course you are from new york you uh, were a hofster wrestler we've heard you say time and time again that you are a nightmare for anderson silva is it the wrestling base that gives you the i do get the courage to make you believe that you have the kryptonite that can usurp anderson silva from his throne yeah, i think it's the uh if you look on paper i think i have a nightmare matchup as far as i think i have the better wrestling i think i have the better jitsu i think i'm younger obviously <laughs> on paper you can't you can't deny that <laughs> and then uh uh, I think I have a longer reach. I, I think I'm athletic enough where I, I think I'm probably the most athletic guy he's ever faced, if not more athletic than him. Uh, and um, I'm just, and I, and I think it's, it's enough to where I'll be aware of striking on my feet to where it's not, he's not going to be hitting me with things out of nowhere. And you look at the fight, uh, the first one with Chael Sonnen, or even the first round of the last one with Chael Sonnen, and he was able to dominate him with his wrestling in those rounds. Is that going to be obviously the key for you in this fight? I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not Chael Sonnen. You know, it's going to probably be a different looking fight than that. But I mean, the goal is to expose his weak points. And I think he's been exposed before with Chael and other fighters where he's got taken down. And, um, you know, Chael had him in mounts a couple times in the fights. And uh, so I'm going to, you know, I, I see those fights and I'm going to try to expose him in the same way but capitalize a little bit differently okay you talk about capitalizing on the fight and we saw you against mark munoz with that elbow and you'd said that you had worked with ray longo on the striking to yeah. develop that kind of uh, striking with your hands how do you i guess come into this training camp looking and to improve your striking yeah you know, i think this whole uh this time off I, I think i improved my striking more than anything um Obviously, Anderson Silva, he's highly accoladed in, uh, in, in Muay Thai, and he's had such devastating knockouts, and that's going to be his area of expertise when we fight. Um, but I think I have the knowledge and, and the confidence on my feet to, to be there without being nervous and uptight. You know, I think I could uh, – and I have the range where I'm not – you know, he's not going to be in rage if I'm not. You know, if, if, if we line up with each other and we're in each other's faces, there's a good chance I could grab his leg and there's a good chance he could hit me at the same time, you know. So it's uh, there's no disadvantages with that, and I think I'm going to – good spot with that did you expect from everything that happened through the last year that this would be the fight that would be your comeback fight no after I mean right after I beat Mark Munoz and he had beaten Chael Sonnen the second time it, it looked like it was perfect uh, timing to, ha to to make the fight happen 
UFC set, told me that they were going to make the fight happen, so I was excited to, to start training for Anderson. Uh, he said he wanted to fight three months after that fight, so it was going to be perfect. And then he came out after everybody was saying we're going to be fighting that he didn't want to fight until 2013. So then I was frustrated, and then and then actually I had I was like, you know what? Let me get some bone chips out of my elbow while I'm waiting. And as soon as I get the bone chips out of my elbow that day, I'm going the internet or people call me, I forget, and he's taking a fight with Stefan Bonner. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So that was frustrating at that point. Uh, and then, then I ended up getting a match with Tim Boach and having a shoulder injury. And I'm thinking, okay, there's other, there's other uh, contenders now involved that are probably going to get in front of me. And then everybody lost. So I'm back to where I was and I'm number one contender. And so somehow the unfortunate string of events turned out in your favor. Yeah. Um, um, with the injury, as far as that's concerned, I remember, I believe, reading you had a torn AC joint, a separated shoulder, a torn labrum, the bone chips in your shoulder. Have you been able yet to fully test that? How did the rehab process go? Oh, yeah, I'm back to 100%. I could do everything uh, you name. I'm feeling great. Yeah. And you're going to go ahead and start the training camp for this fight when you get back to New York after all the media tour that you're doing now. Yep, exactly. I'm actually, I actually got in really good shape. When the fight got announced for the last four weeks, pretty much, I got in really good shape, got my body weight down to where I wanted to be, uh, started sparring again, feel, felt really good, and then I'm like – wow, I got like eight more weeks to go and I'm already in great shape. So we actually, this week is actually good that I'm doing the PR because it's, I'm going to kind of relax a little bit, not do as much working out, not eat as, as good as I've been doing. <laughs> and so when I come back to New York on Monday, I'm going to be excited to get back into my training camp and get going for this title fight. Sure. Uh Anderson Silva was also supposed to be doing a media tour in L.A. That happened just a couple days ago, and it turns out that he didn't show up for any of the events. Do you feel like that at all is him in some sort of sense snubbing you or any of the hype leading up to the fight? Yeah, some people are saying, a lot of people are saying that, but, I mean, if that's his focus is to screw me over with media, I mean, I was going to do the media anyway. Um, I don't think he's I, I wouldn't think he's thinking like that but if he is I mean he's going to be in trouble on July 6th so that, that's his worry you know I think he's going to have more wor worried about than that so you don't think it's any by any means him not taking you seriously I, I think he's taking me pretty seriously you know uh, I think he knows that I'm a big threat to him to be honest with you I mean it's the closest odds he's ever had and since I think the Dan Henderson fight uh, and that's me with a year layoff with nine fights and, and I still haven't been able to show exactly what I could do in the octagon and that's why I'm excited to shine on July 6th what surprises me going into this is what I've read anyway, is that you haven't renewed or renegotiated your contract ahead of this fight, that you're planning to do it afterwards, and that you also think that you'll be the super fight spoiler, because there's all this talk about Anderson Silva, John Jones, Anderson yeah. Silva, GSP. Yeah. Um, how do you plan to, I guess, do you think that that's the best decision for you to not renegotiate that contract ahead of this fight? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I was, I'm in this sport for one reason, to be the champion. I know the money is going to come when I be champion. I don't want to, I'm not going to be fighting for, you know, or fighting to get on a contract a couple extra thousand dollars, uh, you know, before I fight for the title because I really believe I'm going to win this fight and that's when the money's going to come. Um, yeah, so, and what was the rest of the question? Oh, well, I was basically touching on the fact that you said that you were going to play the spoiler in the super fights. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, uh, the, that whole thing, I don't think I'm going to be the spoiler. I think I'll be renewing like a whole, uh, like, p the way I see it is that after I beat Anderson Silva, there's going to be a lot of other fights that people want to see as far as a rematch with me and Anderson Silva, me and someone else in another weight class. I, I think I'm going to come out as the man. Cool. And then people are going to want to see me. Uh, you are undefeated. You are from New York. You're the Hofstra wrestler, All-American. Um, how do you feel about the MMA, I guess, being lobbied against in New York? And do you think that we'll ever see you get to fight maybe in Madison Square Garden? Yeah, I mean, I hope so. I, I, I actually did uh, a lobby for MMA in New York with Ronda Rousey and Lorenzo Fertitta like, a couple weeks ago, or probably a month ago at this point. And uh, we have overwhelming amount of support from po all the politicians and just like crazy how it's not being passed. It comes down to one guy who's the Speaker of the House, and he has to put it on the floor for the Assembly to vote on it. And as soon as that happens, I mean, we have overwhelming amount of support. So it's going to get voted on. But it just happens that that guy, the Speaker of the House, the one person is the one really connected with the dirty politics going on with the unions with Vegas and it just uh, it's just upsetting that this guy he's, he's doing he's doing it for all the wrong reasons you know so uh I don't know. We're going to have to talk to this guy. <laughs> Not just kidding. <laughs> you take down uh, Jalen Vellante and maybe Costa, Matt Sarah. Exactly. Just tell me where he's at. I'm right there. I'm in the neighborhood anyway. 
Tell me a little bit about your training partners and working alongside of a former UFC welterweight champion and Matt Serra and also Matt, I'm sorry, Ray Longo, one of the best striking coaches probably in MMA. Yeah, and he, I don't think he gets enough credit because I think he's, like you said, I think he's one of the best coaches and uh, I don't think a lot of people recognize that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful and blessed to be from where I'm at. I'm from Long Island, New York, never left, and I just happen to be around some of the best gyms in the world um, with Hensel Gracie's gym added to that with John Dunher as a coach over there. Uh, I'm really surrounded by great people, and, and I'm lucky enough to have my family around too, so I'm in a good spot. Great. No. And one last question for you. Olympic wrestling and what's going on there. You're obviously a big wrestler as far as your base and how you came up and came to be. What are your thoughts on it being taken out of the Olympics? And are you going to try to help in any way to save Olympic wrestling, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, it's uh, terrible. I think everybody knows that. It's one of the rings and it's one of the Olympic rings. It's one of the oldest sports in the world, one of the oldest sports in well, one of the first sports in, in, in the Olympics. And um, it's just uh, it's it's a travesty if they actually got rid of it. I don't think they're gonna go through with it. I think it's almost like kicking the butt to the to like the Fila people that were running it. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm I don't I've been tweeting about it and I don't know if there's much I, uh, what else I could do. But I'm, I think I'm going to some wrestling event in New York City coming next week to uh, to help with that actually some Iran versus Team USA something like that. Great. Well, we certainly appreciate that. And we wish you all the best of luck against Anderson Silva. Again, that is on UFC 162 at the MGM Grand Garden Arena, July 6. Tickets will be on sale very soon. This is Heidi Fang with Chris Whiteman, the next contender to Anderson Silva's title.